All right, welcome back everyone to our final round of company pitches. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the following. Dr. Radmir Derrida is the founder and CEO of 48 Hour Discovery Inc and co-CEO of Quantum Intelligence Corporation. He's an associate professor with, of chemistry at the University of Alberta. He's also an advisory board member of Organic and Biochemical, Biomate sorry, the Organic and Biomolecular Chemistry Journal and recipient of numerous research awards. Thomas Hansen is VP Corporate Affairs of Northern RNA, a Canadian CDMO specializing in the production of nucleic acid products that support life enabling work by providing scalable manufacturing capacity. Thomas is a collaborative leader with over 30 years of private and public sector experience and has extensive experience navigating complex large scale infrastructure projects. And Brad Sorensen is founder and CEO of Providence Therapeutics. Brad's passionate about building a thriving biosector in Alberta. And with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, he has led Providence to pivot from the original focus on cancer to devote their deep expertise in mRNA, mRNA design and manufacturing into creating a world-class mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. PTX COVID-19B has generated very favorable results from its phase one human clinical trials and Providence is working closely with Health Canada towards late stage trials and ultimately receiving regulatory approval. Enjoy the presentations. Hello, can everybody hear me? Uh, can we go to a full screen mode for the page deck? It would, it's under view on a full screen. Sorry, uh, view on a full screen in the view. I can also share my screen if it's easier. Atmir, when you're full screen, if you click the four little arrows at the top, it'll go full screen. I didn't know that till after I gave my talk. Sorry. <clears throat> Can everybody see my screen? If you click up in the four little arrows, then it goes full screen. Okay. Um, let me know if everything's good and then I'll start presenting. Yes. Okay. So it's a really great pleasure to be here. My name is Ratnir Dirt. I'm founder and CEO of 48 Hour Discovery. Uh, 48 Hour Discovery is uh, a biotech started in Edmonton, Alberta in 2017. And as of this year, it's a multinational group of three companies. One in San Diego, California, 48 HD Biopharma, which is a drug development core for the technologies uh, developed in Canada. And uh, Quantum Discovery Corporation and 48 Hour Discovery started a joint venture called Quantum Discovery, which is an AI drug discovery core in Seoul, South Korea. And briefly, 48 Hour Discovery has been incorporated in 2017 in Edmonton at the University of Alberta with the help of Glyconet, <clears throat> Canadian Glycomics Network. As of today, we have, <clears throat> sorry, as of today, we've grown to a company with about four and a half million revenue total over the uh, four or five years, uh, $2 million in dilutive and non-dilutive financing. And our main business model is working with the global pharmaceutical companies to assist them with drug discovery. And we work with five global pharmaceutical companies and have about uh, 19 contracts start to date. Our business model is very simple. If there is a future disease with the molecular target for which there needs to be a future drug, we provide a starting point for drug discovery, so-called molecular ligands that block these molecular targets. 
and a service starting point for as a drug lead diagnostic handle imaging agent or delivery agent. Uh, 48 hour discovery is uh, really a vision as to how drug discovery should be done. And it's a, it's a proposal that discovery of drugs should not take them more than two business days. And we striving to build a pipeline that allows us to do a turnaround almost as fast as that. It doesn't necessarily take two days always, but our pipelines in which segments of discovery can take only a few days look like this. We, we take targets that come from our clients. We expose them to our proprietary technology, which is a mixture of billions of molecules all sitting in one little tube, each connect to a little DNA barcode. And from that mixture of molecules in a matter of hours, uh, we should be able to identify which molecules uh, bind to a molecular target. And this identification is done with the help of uh, well-established next generation sequencing technology. Uh, the most important part of the company is the data cloud that then processes this, the, this deep sequencing data, converts this deep sequencing data in a series of decisions and list of molecules for the clients to make or decision-making process, let's say, to repeat this screen with another type of molecular libraries. And this, this segment, this discovery segment when optimized takes only a few days. Uh, this is a successful business model. We've been working with a large number of uh, pharmaceutical companies. Many of them remain undisclosed. Uh, Merck recently disclosed we're working together. Noah Cell Technology in South Korea is one of our public clients. There's a number of clients that are in the top 20 list that I cannot explicitly mention, but uh, for reference, here's the list of top 20 companies. Uh, we've been uh, doubling our sales every year, except for the last year where we unexpectedly reached a much higher sale volume and uh, so sort of exceeded the sales beyond the, the normal scale of our uh, sale process. And uh, why companies like Merck and others like to work with us, again, because the way we do the discovery, the way we handle molecular discoveries and drug discovery is slightly different from the way it's done traditionally. So traditional drug discovery on the left, uh, the word library is, is oftentimes used in a traditional drug discovery, and it, it does tend to look like a regular library. So here's the library of books, and here's the library of molecules. Library of molecules is very much like a library of books. You have shelves with different chemicals in them, or plates with different chemicals in different locations. It's all encoded by location. So encoding by location is very much like a book that you can find on a shelf L7 on the, on the left stack. But uh, whereas these large, beautiful libraries take a lot of money and infrastructure to run, there is an alternative library of books that can fit on the USB stick and have a, a tag, which is going to be just a file name, or maybe if it's an electronic library in a cloud, that's going to be an IP address. So we do the same for molecules. We, we transfer molecules from plates and labeled flasks from shelves and shelves of millions of chemicals to one tubes to only one tube where each chemical has its own unique tag. This way we can actually traverse many orders of magnitude, go from hundreds of thousands of chemicals to over a billion, but at the same time we shrink the time that it requires to manage this complexity and also shrink the cost. And you would imagine the same would happen if you just search uh, books on the USB. So the, the management of molecules is one of the things, and then the production of molecules as a unique secret sauce. We, we create these libraries billion molecules at a time using a patented process that has been licensed from the University of Alberta and developed in my research group. Combined, uh, this, this combined ability to search these vast genetically encoded spaces of real molecules, again, these are not... Uh, these are not in silico, these are not theoretical discoveries. These are discoveries done with real uh, physical entities. And abil our ability to search them and construct them systematically on demand uh, places us as a highly competitive company in the world, uh, comparable to some of the top players in this world, like Peptidream and Bicyclotherapeutic, publicly traded companies, was, uh, some of them was a billion dollar valuation. Uh, a lot of companies that we work with uh, have already tried these platforms and they come to us for their, for our services. So, and uh, to summarize, we have uh, a Canadian core that's a platform technology company with uh, numerous success stories, uh, P 
Picom all our leads provided to particular clients, return customer, customers and a self-sustaining business models in molecular discovery. We have a growing core in San Diego that takes these molecular discoveries. And so far we have two targets in the gut immunology area that we're developing as our own assets. Uh, they exhibit remarkable stability in GI tract and they could be very promising leads for treatment of uh, immunology related diseases in the gut. And uh, we also have a core uh, in South Korea that develops a capacity to do uh, machine learning using the vast data generated by 48 hour discovery engine to start predicting very important drug properties downstream. And very, very briefly, what, what happens in this particular core is that we take one of the world's best machine learning engine developed by collaborators in South Korea, and we fuse it to a data generating agent engine of the 48 hour discovery in Canada that has ability to create uh, millions of data points and then uh, we solve one of the biggest pains of AI drug discovery. So we create new data from scratch that then enables training of these remarkable AI models. So we, we fulfill the need for the undruggable targets for which data doesn't yet exist. Um, typical output for any pipelines, either 48 hours discovery alone or 48 hours discovery combined with AI engine would be production of molecules that look like these for the chemists in the audience, just give you a second to enjoy it. But these are, these are very unique classes of molecules called peptide macrocycles that we can, uh, again, produce in billion scale quantities, rapidly search, develop into molecules that can start as a pharmaceutical leads and then apply AI algorithms to further optimize to give them the best properties and do atom by atom optimization of them uh, using artificial intelligence. With that, I'll be happy to answer questions in private or in separate meetings. And again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present. Good afternoon, everybody. I assume you can you can all hear me. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Hansen. I'm the Vice President of Corporate Affairs at Northern RNA. I'm pleased to be here today with this amazing cohort of Alberta-based biotech companies. I'd like to acknowledge the many other Alberta companies who are not presenting today, but are part of a vibrant and growing life sciences sector in Alberta. Next slide, please. Northern RNA is a Canadian CDMO specializing in the scalable manufacturing of nucleic acid products. We are manufacturing a better future. Next slide. Innovation, resilience, entrepreneurism is the spirit of Alberta business and of Northern RNA. Founded in 2020 and located in Calgary, we took occupancy of our facility on January 4th of this year. And in just 60 days, we were able to begin manufacturing of raw materials for mRNA based vaccines. Next slide. Northern RNA provides a single secure source for a significant portion of the mRNA vaccine supply chain. As I mentioned earlier, we have already completed phase one of our business plan and are currently producing raw materials for mRNA vaccines. To this, we'll be adding GMP manufacturing by the end of this year. Our original plan was to develop a fill finish facility. However, we recognize that there is significant expertise and capacity within Alberta. So we have pivoted for our phase three plan and now plan to provide commercial scale LMP manufacturing within Alberta by the end of 2022. Next slide. Our reach. Northern RNA is proud to be part of Alberta's life sciences ecosystem. We enable many of the research and development activities of our clients and partners, some of whom are here today. Over the past several months, we've been successful in developing our client pipeline within Alberta, Canada, and internationally. Next slide, please. 
our advantage. Speed and agility is our superpower. But within a very competitive global market, one of our most strategic advantages is that we are based in Alberta. Calgary is a top five livable city with excellent recreation, cultural and education opportunities, all the while boasting a low cost of living and excellent real estate options. In a global race, these are key competitive advantages. Next slide, please. Our people, led by President and CEO Brad Stevens, Dr. Jemaya Boye, Dr. Niket Donaldson and myself, we have an experienced executive and scientific leadership team with strong shared values. And we have been exceptionally successful in recruiting world-class talent from within Alberta and across Canada. Next slide. Today we have 15 employees and we expect to grow to 45 by the end of this year as our GMP suite comes online. The phase three LMP facility would see us grow by an additional 100 employees by the end of 2022. Recruitment for phase three would focus on industrial chemists and biologists in Alberta who are currently looking to transition from the oil and gas sector into biomanufacturing. Next slide. And now some information about our products and services. Next slide. Our bioprocessing currently includes plasma DNA production, mRNA production, and cell bank production and characterization. Next slide. Our chemistry solutions include off the shelf products, as well as over 20 custom designed cap analogs. We also offer solid phase organic synthesis of nucleic acid products. In addition to our bioprocessing and chemical chemistry solutions, we offer additional services to our clients, including plasma design, analytical testing, and GMP certified cold storage. Next slide. Here you can see our current production capacity, scale, and timelines. Also noted is the addition of GMP manufacturing by the end of this year. To achieve this level of production, we have adopted lean manufacturing and agile project management as part of our corporate culture and apply those principles rigorously to all of our processes. This is what makes us unique as a CDMO, speed and scale. As you can see, most products can be delivered within weeks following an order. Next slide. Our 24,000 square foot facility is located in Calgary. We converted a former oil and gas testing lab into a state-of-the-art biomanufacturing facility. Through the adaptive reuse of an existing facility, we are not only able to achieve our manufacturing schedule and goals, but we're also supporting our corporate environmental and sustainability goals. Next slide. We are looking forward to completing phase two of our business plan with the addition of GMP manufacturing. Next slide. The area indicated in yellow is our phase two GMP suite. We have partnered with McCart, a Quebec based manufacturer for the supply of our GMP clean rooms. We anticipate, anticipate our GMP facility to complete, be complete and certified by the end of this year. Within this facility, we will have the capacity to manufacture 100 million doses of mRNA and DNA-based vaccines annually. Next slide. Phase three of our business plan is the development of a facility for commercial scale LMP manufacturing with the capacity to manufacture 500 million doses annually. To be located in Calgary, this facility could be in operation as early as the end of Q4, 2022. Next slide. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time. Should you have any questions or wish to discuss opportunities, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's good to be last.
I promise to uh, keep this uh, concise and uh, allow a little bit more time for questions if there's uh, if there's anybody that's uh, interested in knowing more about us. So Providence Therapeutics, uh, Canada's mRNA vaccine company. Uh, Providence was incorporated in 2015. And I should just quickly sound check. Somebody in the chat, just give me a thumbs up if uh, this is coming through effectively. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so we were incorporated in 2015 and uh, with primary focus on oncology. Um, I, it was really a passion play for me. I was a co-founder of Arcturus Therapeutics, which is out of San Diego. It's trading on the NASDAQ. Uh, and that is a company that also uses uh, RNA therapies and mRNA. And, uh, but in 2013, my second oldest son, who had just turned 13 years old, was diagnosed with stage four brain cancer. And I became very passionate about using RNA, particularly mRNA technology to go after oncology. And so I'll quickly add my son's still with us today. He's a walking, talking miracle. But that was really the, the premise for the foundation of Providence Therapeutics. Um, next slide, please. So Providence is, as you'll see here, is really, um, we're focused on R&D. That, that's what we care about, and, and that's what we're good at. Uh, so in order for us to stay focused on that, we uh, actively look up and, and pursue partnerships and, and collaborations. This is just an example of sort of a collaboration map that we generated in the last 18 months as we turned our attention to a COVID program. So in February of, of 2013, we had a scientific advisory board meeting uh, where we were preparing to, to take our, our uh, cancer vaccine program into the clinic. Um, and we started discussing this interesting events going on as it relates to this, this virus that was coming out of, of Wuhan, China. And was this going to be serious? Was this not going to be serious? And we determined uh, in February that we should be prepared for this. And so we paused our cancer program and immediately began working on a COVID vaccine. We designed it and we had it ready to go in March of 2020. And so that same vaccine that we designed there is the, is the vaccine that we have going into phase two clinical trial uh, in the coming weeks here in Canada. But more importantly, you know, I'm not here to talk about a COVID vaccine. I'm, I'm here to talk about what we did as a company and how we approach this, this challenge. Um, so we wanted to get uh, speed to market. We, we've got our own capacity internally to focus on lipids and, and delivery. Um, but we recognized, you know, if we wanted to have speed to market with a COVID vaccine, we needed to identify an existing delivery technology that had, you know, already been proven in the clinic and was ready to go. So we approached Genovant out of Vancouver. Within two weeks, we had secured a license to Genovant for their intellectual property for the lipid nanoparticle delivery technology. And, uh, and they've been providing us support ever since. A fantastic company, very well run. Then we, we needed to secure the models in order to test our vaccine. You know, we weren't interested in building up a huge you know, overhead uh, in order to do this. So we began approaching University of Toronto, UHN, OICR, Sunnybrook Research Institute, where they had level three facilities and already uh, researchers in place that understood and were following the pandemic and, and had the models necessary for us to do challenge studies and to test our vaccine uh, in, in early uh, preclinical models. So we were able to do that and we did that very quickly. All our preclinical work was completed by August of, of 2020 and we submitted that to Health Canada and we received approval from Health Canada to begin our phase one clinical trial uh, later that year. So at that point in time, you know, we needed to start looking at regulatory, we need to start looking at clinical trial, et cetera, et cetera. So we licensed, we, we secured more partnerships with MANA Research, Sirion, and, and, um, and others across Canada to build up the clinical trial aspect of this. I, I share this 
and as an example of how something can work effectively in collaboration. So Providence, we believe, has a world-class uh, COVID vaccine. Uh, we're looking forward to going to a phase two clinical trial. Um, it's a comparator trial. We're going to be compared against uh, the Pfizer vaccine, and we, we anticipate doing very well. Um, but what we've also done well is, is demonstrate that there is a way that that companies can collaborate uh, and, and do so very effectively in Canada and do so very rapidly. We are excited about what's happening in Alberta, the, the commitment that we're seeing from, from the Alberta government to try and build up infrastructure and, and, and an ecosystem here in Alberta. We look forward to, to taking this you know, demonstrated ability to collaborate um, into Alberta. And, and hopefully next time, if I'm doing this next year, you know, we're going to have a map and we're going to blow up the, the province of Alberta and we're going to have a whole bunch of companies listed as they've collaborated with Providence on our next indication that we're focused on. In fact, we've, you know, in this process, we've already, you know, begun having discussions with Alberta companies, Alberta researchers, uh, where we can, we can start building that out. I skipped over Northern RNA. I shouldn't have. Um, Northern RNA, uh, obviously, once we got into the, into the, clinical trial aspect of things and things were moving forward, um, we needed to start focusing on manufacturing. Well, one of the biggest worldwide challenges right now is raw materials. And so we, you know, we convinced the, the founders at Northern RNA to, to set up and to focus on the key raw materials that are needed for, for this type of uh, genetic medicine uh, and to do so here in Calgary so that we would have security supply in Canada and to be able to do this. And we're very pleased that Northern RNA followed through with this. They've executed at, a, at an incredibly high level and we've already received our first shipment. I mean, they went into their facility in January and we received our first shipment of raw material from them last month. And, uh, and we look forward to receiving many, many more. Uh, and then of course, you know, we now need to get into to fill finish. So we've, we've talked to Emergent, uh, out in Manitoba, you know, I understand, you know, API is looking at putting in uh, additional fill finish in Alberta. We're excited about that. Um, but again, we believe, particularly when it relates to sort of a pandemic circumstance, it's not, you know, we're not so much focused on exporting, you know, or, or importing doses. We're, we're, we're focused on capacity, resiliency. Uh, we want to solve the pandemic, not because we want to get rich on the pandemic. We want to solve the pandemic so we can get back to cancer and do what we really started the company to do. Uh, so next slide, please. One thing I will say, um, if there's a silver lining to having a worldwide pandemic, is that it validated uh, mRNA technology. And, you know, if you go back to the beginning of 2020, a, a lot of people weren't familiar with the mRNA technology or it was considered high risk. Now it's probably one of the hottest technologies, you know, going. And, uh, and certainly we've, we've been a beneficiary of that as a company. We've, you know, lots of interested investors, lots of interested partnerships. Um, you know, it, it's a tremendous time to be in the space that we're in. Um, and part of the reason for that, and, and as we understood it, as we were working on personalized cancer vaccines, is that it's the speed in which, once you've got the platform, once you really understand how to make design and make and, and manufacture messenger RNA quickly, um, you all you have to do is change the message. And whether that message is related to a tumor in, in a cancer patient or, or, or it's an emerging variant in a pandemic, once you have that message, we can pivot and we can make a new messenger RNA in two months or less. And so that's the benefit. That's, that's really why it's such an exciting platform is because the speed in which you can respond. And so, and, and then of course, the, you know, the fact that, you know, the two other mRNA vaccines that have been approved to date, you know, had 95% protection, which has still been unmatched by any other technology. That's, that's terrific. We're excited about that. And again, we, we fully expect that we're going to be in that category as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so on a go forward basis, you know, a, a lot of the questions I get are, are about variants and, and is this going to be something that we're going to need over and over and over again? We don't know that answer yet. What we do know is that if you do need a booster dose, everybody's clamoring for mRNA. 
you know, and and so having that capacity in Alberta, having that ability to, to respond, I think is critical. Um, really grateful to be where we're at and to be working, uh, you know, in, in such a great province and, and, and growing here. Uh, I welcome any questions. Thank you. Well, thanks, Brad, for that. We'll uh, we're going to uh, send Brad off the stage to uh, to the partnering uh, venue, and uh, those of you with questions, feel free to uh, to seek him out, hunt him down, and um, and uh, you can ask questions directly to him. Um, so that's it for presentations today. And um, you know, over the past two hours, we've provided only a glimpse into the talent and opportunity that exists in Alberta's life sciences. Alberta is open for business, for partnerships and other opportunities. We're here today to show what we offer and look forward to working with you. One would like to express our thanks to all of today's speakers for lending their time and support to the showcase. Uh, Minister Schweitzer, Dr. Terrell and Dr. Houghton, uh, Michael Weikert from Pasolix, John Lewis from Entos, John McCaffrey from Logics, Mark Sterrett from Azine TX, uh, Radmir Derda from 48 Hour Discovery, Tom Hansen from Northern RNA, and of course, Brad uh, Sorensen from Providence. We've been posting the details of people uh, in, the, in the chat session. Please reach out to them, find them on the floor uh, in the next few minutes and uh, um, learn as much as you can from these companies because not only did you hear from them today, I think you're gonna be hearing from them for a long time. If there are other subsectors you're interested in, reach out to us at BioAlberta and we will help you connect and engage with the broader Alberta ecosystem. I also encourage you to follow BioAlberta on social media and sign up for our newsletter to stay current on what's going on in Alberta's life sciences sector and upcoming BioAlberta events such as our Health and Life Sciences Showcase, which will be held in Edmonton physically. Hopefully, <laughs> go get vaccinated if you don't have your shots. Uh, we will be uh, we will be able to gather and celebrate on November second in Edmonton. Uh, speaking of Bio Alberta, a quick shout out to my team: uh, Trish Filovich, our events manager, who's put all this together and uh, coordinated it; Joshua Lee, who does industry development; Christy Fair, our office manager and help desk; uh, Aaron, uh, who's been around and uh, connecting with many of you and coordinating and uh, and uh, doing what she does best. Uh, and our backstage coordinator, Alex. We couldn't do this without the hard work of a whole team. And on that note, a special thank you to Biotech Canada, and most importantly to Shaley Williams for the outstanding support today and for the use of the Remo platform. We hope you've enjoyed this unique virtual experience. We look forward to engaging with you in the coming months and look forward to seeing you at Bio 2022. If you go to bioalberta.com and look for the Alberta Life Science Interface, <laughs> You will see all of the present, uh, all the profiles of the companies today. Uh, that is your uh, one of your best sources. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are at, uh, if you are participating in BioDigital, uh, check us out in the uh, in the Cab in the Canada Global Marketplace Pavilion. Uh, with that, we're gonna we've got a couple minutes left for networking, um, and then the system will actually shut down on us automatically. Thank you very much for attending today. We really appreciate your time and support, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Take care.